in the video today, I'm going to share with you guys the best Canon lens, in my opinion, for landscape photography. Hi guys, my name's Ben from Ben's Guide, and if you're new here, I'd love to have you subscribe to the channel. We are a growing community here at Ben's Guide of photographers and filmmakers. Landscape photography is such a beautiful genre of photography. Getting to go outdoors with your camera and then just discover the landscape around you. Looking at mountains, vistas, waterfalls, and then taking photos of them is really enjoyable. It's probably my favorite kind of photography, and it's something I regret to say I don't get to do as much as I'd like to. Now, the best lens for landscape photography is always gonna be up for debate, isn't it? Because not all of us as photographers have the same needs. But this is just my opinion, and it's worth remembering that when you watch the video today. Now, also, if you've got any opinions on what you think is the best Canon lens for landscape photography, then please add it in the comments below, because I'm sure that we're all going to share different opinions on this. I think one thing that we could probably all agree on, though, is that when you go outdoors and you do photography on location, then it's always nice to be able to carry at least as possible. I always love it when I can just take one lens with me or no tripod. It's difficult especially as you get older, the younger people watching this might be like, no, I don't mind. I can carry as much gear as I like, mate. But honestly, when you get older, it just starts becoming more about taking as least gear as possible and just, you know, capturing what you can. So having one lens to cover all situations is always going to be a real added bonus. Now saying that, I find that lots of times these lenses which come out like the 24 to 200 or the 55 to 250, I think it is. These lenses are so useful. They're incredibly useful because you can take the lens out and cover most bases. But the kind of letdown or the downside for these lenses is that the quality is not always quite as good as you'd get with a lens that has a smaller focal length. I think it's about balance, right? So it's about getting the balance of quality and focal length. And if you can kind of get as much of the focal length as you need, and keeping the quality good, then that's about the best place you can be. Now, I'd love to share with you guys some of my landscape photos that I've taken with the lens that I'm about to share with you in a moment, so that you can really see for yourselves the kind of quality that this lens can produce. The best Canon lens for landscape photography, in my opinion, is the RF 24 through to 105 millimeter. And this is the F4 version. Now Canon recently released the RF 24 through to 105, and that was the F4 through to F7.1. Now this is a good lens. It takes good pictures and you've got that really good focal length, but the quality is not on par with the F4 version. Now you do pay a little bit of a premium for this, but once again, in my opinion, it's definitely worth it for the quality of the photos that it takes. So first up, 24 millimeters is brilliant for wide angle photography. And when taking photos of landscapes, lots of times you find yourself in a situation where you want to get that wide angle photo. 24 millimeters in most instances is gonna be wide enough. Now, occasionally you'll want it a little bit wider, but you can always do this by shooting two images and stitching them together. It's not ideal, I know, but rarely you'll need wider than 24 millimeters anyway. The second reason I chose this lens is the quality. Never have I taken a picture with this lens and thought that it's lacking in quality and I need a better lens. The quality is superb, it really is. Of course, it's an hourglass lens and it's one of the new RF lenses, which means that the quality is going to be incredible. Now, it's worth me mentioning, there are gonna be times where 105 millimeters is not gonna be long enough and you will need that extra focal length. And that's okay, because if you're carrying two lenses with you, then that shouldn't be too bad. And of course, the 70 to 200 millimeter lens, which 
a lot of landscape photog photographers use is usually going to be in your bag anyway. But having that 24 through to 105 covers all your bases when it comes to wide angle and the mid ground. My third reason for really choosing this lens today is the IS. The image stabilization in all of Canon RF lenses is very good, but you get five stops of image stabilization in the RF 24 through to 105 which is really impressive. Now, when you couple this alongside the Canon R6 with its IBIS, you really can take some low shutter speed photos. This now means that I can remove the tripod from the situation most times I go out and do photography on location, and I can shoot a lot of stuff handheld. In fact, I've tested this and I'm able to get pictures down at one second when I combine the IS and IBIS in camera. Now, of course, if you shoot with a camera like the Canon RP, where you don't have the luxury of having the IBIS, then of course, you're going to have to just rely on the lenses IS. But saying that, you can still shoot as low as one over 15, as long as you haven't got shaky hands. Now, I understand that there are many other choices that could have replaced this lens in this video today. But remember, this is just my opinion, guys. And I want to hear of your other lenses, which would make your top lens for landscape photography. So just leave that in the comments and we can talk about that after the video. Now, if you are in the market for this lens and you're interested in it, then please consider jumping into the description where there's a link. And if you click on that link and buy that lens from that affiliate link, then it helps support the channel here at Ben's Guide. Now, of course, if you don't, you want to buy it from somewhere else because it's cheaper, please go ahead. I'm just glad you're here to watch the video. If you enjoyed this short video today, guys, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet and you're new, hit subscribe and that notification bell. And whatever you do for the rest of the day, guys, make sure it's a good one. And I'll see you in the next video.